Investors are people who invest in people, and it's about building relationships. I, you know, one investor told it to me once, and I think it's a very good way to look at it. Investors like to invest in lines and not in dots. What, do I, what does he mean by this? They want to see progress. They don't want someone to come and say, here is my idea, sign here, or oh, bye-bye. No, they want to say, here's what I'm working on. What do you think I should do next? How do you think I should develop? Here's what I plan to do after three months to show progress, to prove the you part. To show that you can actually execute. And that's that's what I do a lot of the time. So I meet with investors and I ask for their advice. Everyone wants to give advice and it's better than asking for their money. If you get the advice enough times and you get them to spend enough time with you, money will follow. And that's the best way to approach an investor, asking them for advice, not for the money. Oops. Jump. Let's look how it looks from the side of the uh, investor. I hope you agree with this. Right? There are four steps for the sales pipeline of an investor. Right? If I'm an investor, I'm a venture capital, I get leads, introductions, business plans. Then I decide who I want to meet. And I meet them a few times. One, two, I had 12. Now, usually not, 12 is going to be here. Then after, after one or two meetings, the investor decides, do I want to do due diligence? Due diligence is to better understand, to deep dive into the business, look into, talking to their clients, looking on their financials, understanding what, what they actually do, meeting other people, meeting the entire team, or small, bigger. Really getting into understanding what they do, and then there is the deal. Actually, it's not a deal, it's called the term sheet, when the investor is, is coming and suggesting, I want to invest this, and of course then the negotiation starts, and not all of them are kind of deals, but let's simplify it. And this is um, kind of average numbers. So for out of, let's say, a typical venture capital gets 1,200 leads and business plans a year. Yes? No? I didn't count. You didn't count. Out of this, they will have, again, mid-size, depending on the fund, around 500 meetings. It can be a skyfall, it can be a meeting. Of which 50 of them, they'll decide to do due diligence, to actually really investigate. 50 out of the 500 that they've met. And they're only going to make a proposal, give a term sheet to 10 businesses a year. So if you think that they're doing, you know, they've done just 10 deals a year, actually 10 is a lot, let's say five deals a year, they are doing nothing. No, right? They have the 1,200 to look at. But what are your chances, and my chances to raise money? Meeting just one venture capital, one investor is not going to be enough, right? Because they have 1,199 like this. You need to stand out, you need to make sure how they also need some luck and they also need to manage it as many meeting and pitching to enough investors. What's important for that is to remember that no one counts the notes. Doesn't matter if all the investors, almost all the investors in the world told you no, know, if one said yes, that's all you need. And you're gonna hear lots of no's if you wanna decide to visit the next. You're gonna hear no's from suppliers, no's from clients, no's from investors, no's from employees that you wanted to hire, or that are leaving. You're gonna hear lots of no's, and if you can't handle the no's, don't even start. It's a painful place to be. But you need to be focused on the yes. In my case, and it's also camera, so I wasn't planning to share it, but in the last funding round, I had 59 no before I had a yes. 59 meetings, not even just, not at this stage, at this stage. A few went to this stage. Actually, very similar. 
everything in sales it's a numbers game. You need to make sure you, you build enough, you try enough to talk to enough investors. All right, that's that's these are my slides. Um, and happy to to open up there for questions. What do you think about programs like Kickstarter? Mm -hmm. What do you think about programs like Kickstarter? Um, I think Kickstarter is a great way to raise money if you can. Because you don't need to give any equity. It's much better, right? If you can raise money on Kickstarter, why not? It means that you need to build a product and you know, deliver on that. But if you can, yeah, I think it's, it's a great way to raise money. To build a business without, without any investment. The other area of Kickstarter is the crowdfunding platform that they actually do take care of. I don't know, how do you feel about companies that are coming to you uh, after they hit around with uh, crowdfunding? Um, the business, we, yeah. So we, we, we didn't see many scenario and we saw the crowdfunding platform. Business of facility? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and in the UK, I wasn't really looking. Okay, believe me. So in the past, investors looked at it as quite a negative thing on crowdfunding. Now it's okay, okay. So, so. But, it, but Kickstarter is not crowdfunding. So if you can raise money, that's the best validation, right? Because you get traction, you get revenues. But then you, you need to be able to do it on the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. There's cases where the companies just have to look for money. Like the potato salad, right? Yeah. There's one way millions of potato salad for this. Yeah. But did you already have traction when you went for the seed round? Yes. Yes, after this when the seed round, we were uh, only already making enough money to pay for the uh, salad. So you can also raise money without, but it's just how it Any other questions? So that's when we asked before how many people want to raise money one day. How many now? <laughs> Less. <laughs> Less. Less. Okay. I need them now. Hmm? Not even sure. I need them now. You need what? Money. Money? <laughs> what, what is the business? Uh, it's, uh, well, it's based on, based on image processing technology. It's uh, an instant point recognition service uh, with uh, follow-up uh, services to gardeners and other health, small agricultural producers. Uh, essentially, it's uh, uh, it's expressed as a mobile app, but it's cloud-based. Mm -hmm. uh, you scan a plant, uh, the algorithm recognizes the plant, returns you the name, gives you basic information on plant care and directs you to uh, sellers of it, if you, if you want. Good. Sellers of plants and growing meat. So you have already uh, someone who uses it? Uh, we are at the prototype stage. Uh, essentially the product is ready, the algorithm has been developed and tested. Uh, we still need some funding to uh, populate the data. So the challenge of investors is that they are not necessarily understand this industry as well as you do. So, so they don't know if it will work or not. You need to reduce that risk in their mind. That's why they want to see paying customers. Because that's say, okay, someone who is actually an expert in this is willing to pay. That's going to be a good validation. But you can find also other validations. You can try to find. Show them, look. This works very well in one market, and we have the ability to do it in this market. That's also a validation. It doesn't have to be traction. Or to find experts in the industry who will understand what you're doing. And that's already will be a validation. Uh, well, we've spoken uh, to you, engineers. <coughs> we've spoken to uh, producers. Uh, there is interest. Uh, there are uh, some benchmarks. Both in this category and in other categories. Mm -hmm. Products like Shazam, for example, for music. Uh, 
This serves the same purpose, but the uh, of plants. Uh, it's a bit we have a pretty good feeling about it, but the thing is that, uh, indeed, as you mentioned, when you are pitching to the people, they are usually not really close uh, to this area. Yeah. Uh, so we, I have trouble uh, getting uh, the uh, scope of the problem. Good. So, so one of the things I'm able to share right, is, is to get first to practice the pitch. And I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing the sales presentation, the pitch presentation of Flat Club 100 times in three months, every three months. So I've done it thousands of times. Mm -hmm. I have any question that is possible. Mm -hmm. I've answered every question that is possible. If you ever think that you're doing something the same over and over, I am there. Yeah, I'm good. There. So that's how you get better first. And the second, you need to simplify the story. I, I told you now a little bit about what we do. I didn't even touch, you know, 1% of the complexity. And when I talk to investors, I don't touch as much of the complexity. I stay on, on this level and keep it for the next meetings. Works for me, but no? what, what do you think works in that? Well, it's a complicated business. How does it work for you? Yeah, that's, that's uh, important to know. Very concise, like, Short and then expand the But with uh, Raja, I have no problem to advise about talking to you. Oh, well, Yerman, that's a lot of uh, new formulation of the business model. So we, we have been talking right. quite, so, you know, quite Yeah, and that's the time to, to start early, right? And then to show the, the relationship and you know, not ask for the advice. <coughs> We are going to stay here for um, a bit more to talk about Dima and the team and me. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.